Hey guys, welcome to the third part in our crash course in Neo-Austrian economics. In this video, we're gonna go through a variation of the mathematical version of Garrison's model. Let's go. So in this variation, we make a distinction between our production technology and our resource constraint as illustrated by uh, these two equations here, right? And we also add a law of motion of capital right over here. Um, this is the system and we note that in steady state, this is where our equilibrium investment is gonna be equal to delta kt star, right? Which is gonna be our optimal uh, kt value. Um, it follows with a little bit of algebra. Our equilibrium values are given as follows. Um, this is just what it is, it's just a lot of math. Um, really, the interesting parts come from when we start going and doing uh, some comparative statics. So um, using our key equations, we see that a general increase in technology uh, increases everything. So that means we're going to see an increase in our interest rate, our increase in our investment, our increase in consumption, an increase in our period of production, an increase in our capital holdings, uh, increase in output. And we'll also go and see a increase in this term known as gross domestic expenditure, which is really the total level of production in the economy. So just in terms of understanding this visually, which is how uh, most people go and understand this stuff, um, these two are gonna move together. So we're gonna see our stages of production go and increase and our PPF go and shift outwards. Now, um, he, what happens here uh, is very interesting. So we're gonna first go and see uh, an increase in consumption, right? Or an increase in uh, this over here as a result of our technological stock driving up our uh, interest rate. However, we're gonna also see a increase in our supply of loanable funds. So this is gonna go and move it out over there. So the argument being is that our equilibrium interest rate is gonna go and remain unchanged. So for our long run effects, um, we're gonna start thinking about what our firms go and do with the extra capital. So the way we carry this through is that what happens to capital in the next period as a result of the shock? That's gonna go and increase. What's going to happen to capital in the next period as a result of the extra output in period T? Uh, that's gonna go and increase as well. What about here? What's gonna to happen to uh, production in the next period? So overall, it's gonna go up. And for here, we're gonna go and see that what's gonna to happen to investment in the next period as a result of the increase in output. We're gonna go and see a increase over here. So that that's pretty cool over there. So the way to go and understand uh, secular growth in this context is first noting um, that these two are happening simultaneously. Uh, so first, we're gonna go and uh, start here um, by the Hayakian triangle, though we can equally just go and say that it's a bit of a shift out of our PPF uh, for some reason, we're using a linear technology as opposed to our Cobb-Douglas technology, but I'm, I'm just going to ignore that for now. Um, what we go and we see is that this technological shock, right, for the same level of, of goods, right, it takes less time. So we have this level of consumption, right, or this level of value that's produced, it being able to be produced at this stage of production, and our final goods um, being produced over here. Um, what we end up going and uh, seeing actually less of at these stages here um, is time spent at those earlier stages uh, because of this technological shock. So this shift out of, uh, right, of our PBF and our stages of production right, due to more um, consumer goods and in demand for investment goods, because you need to go and produce those consumer goods, uh, that's gonna increase your demand for loanable funds. And that in turn is going to be followed up by a shift in demand at that point. So we're gonna be over here to begin with. And then in the next period, um, we're gonna go and see our firms get uh, a little bit smarter. And again, these two move together, right? It's gonna go out like this here and your supply curve is going to shift 
over there as well, keeping your interest rate unchanged. So um, I hope I articulated this well. I mean, obviously you can probably find a little bit of a better explanation, but uh, I think this is pretty cool because this model actually goes and considers what the firms could then do uh, with the extra capital available as a result of the technological shock. Um, so I hope this video helps. Uh, take care.